So thanks everyone for being here. I know I'm uh, the last thing on the conference um, schedule. So um, if you're here, I'm super grateful uh, just for that reason. And I'm David Duncan. I'm a member of the working group and my day job is I work at uh, Amazon as a partner solutions architect on operating system distributions and uh, uh, cloud native solutions. Um, so uh, we made it to cloud edition uh, again this year and for the F37 release, we will be a, an addition. And that means that there are a lot of things that uh, have to be done. So I'm super excited. Thank you, Marie. Yes, also on the Mindshare committee. Um, and uh, that features quite a bit into, um, into where I'm going with this as well. Um, so it isn't just about what we do with the distribution itself, right? We have uh, team initiatives, but we also have a responsibility uh, for team interaction. So we have a responsibility to infrastructure. We have uh, a lot of bugs. We have uh, requirements for security, just like any other uh, part of the, um, the Fedora group. Um, with Mindshare, we have a lot of community outreach that needs to be done. We have a lot of marketing content to produce. Uh, we have ambassadors to enable. Um, and then I put, and last on this list and somehow underneath the footer is the QA team. And that's kind of, that's super fitting because of course nobody remembers to do the absolute best job with QA and QA is critical to everything that we do. So I just want to point out that we really could use your help, your uh, time, and um, and your guidance on what the right uh, way to handle QA for the cloud instances is and uh, what we can do to keep that moving forward and continue to have momentum there. But we want momentum. We want more momentum around marketing and the community blog and solutions that uh, involve the things that you're already working on. So if you're out there and you want you're wondering what you can do to help cloud the the biggest thing you can do is is just um use it as a foundation for what you're doing in in the work that you're doing right uh you're doing right now so we have some team initiatives some of the things that we're working on um uh, we're working on uh, moving our image publication away from image factory um and uh, and we're also we're, we're moving it towards Mash, um, and we're moving the build in, uh, build um, process to Kiwi. And you may wonder why we're doing that over uh, some of the things that are more common OS build um, uh, in particular. And one of the reasons for that is because we are using ButterFS as our foundation, our, our file system, and. Uh, with ButterFS as a file system, we don't have uh, proper support in OS build. Um, if uh, that becomes, you know, if that if that becomes functional, uh, we'll we'll look at what we need to do to integrate there as well. Um, we want to move our documents from the wiki to Fedora Docs. Um, we're, you know, we think that that's. I mean, there's a momentum there for all of us uh, in. Uh, so we want to make sure that what we're doing is consistent with what everyone else is doing. And we think that, I mean, just generally, it's a better, it's a better fit, easier to, easier to discover, easier to use. But we need more documentation, and um, I'll get into a little bit more from there. Um, so uh, we're also working on including uh, 35 and up. Uh, into the Azure community. So we're working on uh, building out the, um, the images and then the upload process will be included through MASH on uh, to the Azure community. I hope most of you or many of you got an opportunity to uh, see the conversation yesterday around the Azure community um, and their, or the community marketplace, I mean. 
pretty exciting stuff. So a lot of people think that what we're working on is just the cloud base edition, right? Um, and we really think that that's, uh, that's true. We are, you know, we do strive to have, uh, to continue to bring the cloud base image to, um, uh, to the community, but we don't think that it stops there, right? I mean, our, the cloud-based image is just sort of foundational to what it is that we think that we're, you know, we're developing here and we're working on ensuring. One of those things is platform strategy, and I'll get into that a little bit more, um, but, you know, a lot of the public clouds have their own, um, their own configurations, their own requirements for how, um, how the uh, the communications with the metadata occurs and how the communications with applications that use specific APIs is handled inside of the uh, OS. And um, while we do still insist on the strictest open source standards, right, just the same way as we would with anything, there is some flexibility that's necessary and a lot of that ends up being um, something that we take on as a group. Um, that also includes packaging strategy and, and strategy for how we're going to handle the, the, um, the agent publication, the, uh, the management of the toolkits, so the SDKs and uh, all of the component parts that we think are, are things that just generally cloud users want to have uh, fully functional with kind of a dial tone service. Um, and then a framework strategy. So we want to make sure that this is important for all of our uh, all of our users. So anyone who's using Fedora as a foundation for applications built on Django or WordPress or whatever, we want to make sure that that, that strategically we have uh, this this um, alignment with what they're playing, you know, what they're doing, and and make sure that we can um, we can support. Uh, the efforts that they have and maintain, um, especially because we feel like this is the first place they have, you know, we want this to be the first place that they go when they decide they want to experiment or determine what it is that they do next. And then Vagrant Solutions, we're still supporting the Vagrant Solutions. Um, we need uh, more help with uh, VirtualBox and, and VirtualBox testing. So if you're a VirtualBox user, we'd love to hear from you. And if you're using uh, Arch 64, um, the Vagrant solutions on Arch 64 are starting to be something that we want to we want to keep, uh, we or we want to accelerate um, availability for. And then, um, you know, there's uh, there is some discussion around resurrecting the um, the uh, AWS or Amazon. Um, provider and we're looking into making sure that we can we can do that and then we want to um, continue to build out uh, support for solutions um, we want to one of the first things that I've been working on around that is uh, trying to make sure that I can uh, trying to create a neural fedora uh, cloud image so that we have a cloud image that is ready for um, ready for GPU use um, for, for uh, bigger jobs. And that's just a prototype. Um, we've looked at that and we think that it could be an, a, a very good uh, container-based solution and that a container-based solution would service both the requirements of the standard cloud image and also the Fedora uh, CoreOS images. So we may, we can do both um, at the same time. So we want to Make sure that we have um, as much overlap there as we possibly can. And then we also want to make some instances that can be integrated with cloud IDEs. Um, the one that I was uh, looking at specifically was Cloud9. Cloud9 um, uh, on Amazon comes with the ability to leverage uh, Ubuntu and Amazon Linux out of the box, but then there's nothing stopping us from being able to create an image that is uh, effectively fully functional in Fedora. I'm going to stop just for a second and look at what's going on over here. 
Um, so <clears throat> um, we're, you know, obviously building and deploying images. We want this, uh, the integration of MASH uh, with Koji. Um, and the reason we want that, obviously, is because we want to be able to handle um, a push to all of the regular, the standard um, uh, cloud um, providers. Uh, and MASH already does that out of the box. So we don't have to redevelop any kind of uh, any of the work that's that's being done um, to um, to pro to provide these images or push the images into uh, the various marketplaces and also uh, into um, private clouds as well. Um, and uh, we have uh, some policy base requirements around the modifications that we're doing, and we're trying to keep track of those and ensure that they're happening in a way that is consistent with the expectations of the council and and the uh, engineering committee that's uh gonna that's probably going to get thicker where there's a lot of uh, things that people want to do inside of uh, cloud environments that if we were to do those on premises i would you know we would consider them to be some sort of a man in the middle attack or um or not suitable for the way that you know we would expect to to leverage uh, a base image so our Fedora cloud-based image doesn't include any of those refinements, but then we have very specific, ver you know, instances uh, that do. Um, so when you look at the Fedora cloud base, you'll see uh, there's um, two uh, architectures that we're producing in uh, the in the environment that we have, and then uh, our friends at Red Hat are producing one for the S390. Um, so we try to support them as much as possible. And then just like I was saying, we were trying to create these customized cloud images and then maintain that uh, the uh, policy exceptions for each one of them so that uh, people can know that there, there are specific, um, specific requirements for each one of the images here. So there's a, uh, Google has a, a, a guest agent and uh, similarly, Azure has a VM agent, and those are being used in the GCP image, and then now our new uh, uh, Fedora for Azure image, and that Azure image is coming any day. We're, we're working hard to make sure that that happens. But there's going to be more, and we, ex we expect there will be many more, uh, just because there, uh, we start to see a few more purpose-built configurations or configurations that are meant to achieve specific types of solutions. So uh, ones that are being used with VDI or uh, leveraged for, um, like I said, the IDE or something of that nature. And we wanna make sure that those are uh, tied back into our development process. And also there's a good catalog of what, what's included. So we know when and, and exactly uh, why to include those in say uh, security events or um, in package update. Uh, requirements or any kind of escalation that's necessary for uh, making sure that we have what we need where everybody has what they need. Uh, one of the things that we've been discussing lately and Major Hayden has been uh, good enough to help us uh, start on is uh, package dashboard integration. So uh, I think all of us are really enjoying the integration, the package dashboard as, as packagers. And it uh, gives us a place where we can um, we can get sort of a, a, a general look at the package health um, in our meetings and when we're you know discussing what we need to do next. So uh, it really does help us to um, uh, accelerate our understanding of what needs to happen in our in our own working group, but then also in the upstream, uh, and then gives us uh, time and initiatives to talk about uh, in terms of automation and uh, shared practice. Um, some of the ones that we've been looking at are uh, the AWS CLI v2, which is uh, we're working on right now. Um, 
and we'd like to invite some of the package maintainers who are uh, working on um, agents themselves to um, manage and maintain those in the context of the clouds, uh, the the uh, the cloud edition working group, um, and then some others, highly specialized agents like the Hibernate agent, which uh, is beneficial when you're um, creating workloads that can uh, benefit from hibernation and power management in the cloud. So, like I said, we need uh, a lot of help when it comes to the Fedora QA and release readiness. Um, Sumantro has been, you know, heaven sent in many ways for us. Uh, and Adam has been uh, fantastic for giving us guidance where we needed it. But um, that doesn't, um, that doesn't help us to get more results and higher confidence scores from from them and as a QA team uh, that takes good um, good test plans and um, some earlier availability for the for the images so that those images can be tested with ease and uh, not with complication complicated um, upload requirements for the people who are doing the testing and we're looking forward to uh, our cloud test days for the F37 planning um, coming up here pretty soon. We're going to work with uh, Sumantra to get those on the schedule. Um, so we also need to work with the marketing and enablement team or marketing team and, and uh, focus some of our efforts around enablement. Um, the Cloud Edition has maintained a popularity, and uh, as you may remember from the notes that uh, were provided by um, uh, by uh, Matthew in his in his talk, uh, we've had some higher population or high, higher popularity popularity for older versions, and we're trying to nip that in the bud and make sure that we can do that. I think we also need to build more ButterFS knowledge in the community because there are a lot of things that we can do. Uh, just ver there's a lot of versatility in the in the base image um, that's exposed there and um, provides for a lot of flexibility in the way that we lever we use our uh, cloud images. Uh, so I'd like that to be detailed and outlined more and to have some better profiling done. So we we have uh, really good ideas of where it is that we need to improve. And we need blog posts. Uh, if you've got a solution that's based around uh, cloud images or you've got a unique way of, of working with them or you think there's something that's underutilized, we'd certainly love to see uh, content that was related to that and uh, look forward to talking to you about it if you have, if you have ideas. Uh, and we need better getting started documentation. We don't have really any good getting started documentation on the cloud edition. Um, and so uh, we feel like that's something that would be um, super beneficial. Uh, and we just want to focus, you know, on ease of operation and ease of use and uh, the ability to leverage this and the solutions that you have already in place. And with that, I'll take uh, questions. Um, and tell you again that I'm super grateful that you came and, and were a part of this uh, this last, you know, this final session. And thanks, Isabella. I'm super glad to hear that the marketing team is happy to help. We want to create some content and make sure that we're, we're, we're taking care of that. I think that's an important part of what, what we as a team can do is to provide you with that enablement. And thanks, Neil, for the links. Um, I do have a link for the presentation, I just published it, but I'll I'll happily send it over uh, to you, Isabella. So, Alexandra, I think where where can one read more about the build system improvements, the mash, and and whatnot? Uh, there's some there's a few bugs that are out there. There's an issue that are two two specific issues. But then I think most of this has been discussed in the notes or in our in our uh, our meetings, um, and the there was some discussion on why we were why we had the plans to use the mash and and why we plan to use Kiwi 
as a result of that. Um, and then Neil, what's the most pie in the sky thing? The pie in the sky thing for me is, is to um, create the same kind of popularity that I see in the uh, public clouds for, um, for uh, solution-based alternatives to, uh, you know, in, in tools is I'd love to see, you know, Fedora fit into that because our roadmap for the cloud images is predictable and consistent enough that the, and dependable enough that the, um, the cloud providers are excited to put it on that list. And we're keeping the consistency that they need in their tools. So that's, that's my pie in the sky. Um, uh, uh, you know, goal is for them to see this with the same kind of seriousness that they and and support that they see for um, for other ones. Oh, thanks for the that link, Neil. Both of them. And yeah, Alexandra, I think that's a great idea. I think we, we definitely need to see more uh, more write-ups, more more content that helps us to understand why we're making the decisions that we're making. Any other questions? If not, I'll give you a minute to get ready. Thanks, Isabella. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for being here. All right. Uh, one more slide to leave you with, uh, which is all of the thing, all of the places that you can um, you can find us. <laughs>